Well, just to round out our frontline setting data, we have our most recent data presented uh, at ASCO 2013 this year that uh, is on the, the Record 3 study, uh, which was, a, again, a, a relatively new design of a head-to-head -head comparison. And again, I'll ask Bob to walk us through the, uh, the design of that study and some of the top-level results that have been reported. You know, at ASCO, I think one of the key abstract present, presented at ASCO 2013 is the Record 3 trial. Um, it's a trial that uh, Bob Mozer presented at the oral session. It's a trial that was designed uh, as a sequential trial of sunitinib followed by everolimus versus everolimus followed by sunitinib. And, and the trial's results have clarity, although the complexity of the trial presents issues. And well, what does that mean? Well, the, the top line results from the trial, which were the comparison of sunitinib first versus everolimus first, in a non-inferiority phase two randomized fashion demonstrated that sunitinib first is the preferred choice. Um, Everolimus and frontline did not meet the criteria to demonstrate non-inferiority, did not have confidence intervals that statistically allowed us to make that statement, and allows the practicing physician to look at that data and say, okay, given the choice between a TOR inhibitor versus a VEGF receptor inhibitor in the frontline setting, I can feel comfortable in the good and intermediate prognosis patient, primarily, of using a TKI first. The challenges with the trial then come in how it was designed. Most of us would have liked to have seen, well, okay, but if, if sunitinib is followed by everolimus and everolimus is followed by sunitinib, might we be able to assess the sequence compared to each other and the complexities of the trial did not allow us to do that. There were excessive dropouts. There were people that went off study to receive a commercially available drug, not study drug. And, and, and to Bob, Bob Mozer's credit, um, he was unwilling to really speak to the sequence question in the results presented to date at ASCO 2013. So although many of us are interested and we'll talk about sequencing of agents in a few moments, I think the take-home lesson from the trial is really the frontline data comparing sunitinib to everolimus, which people can now feel comfortable that sunitinib, sunitinib is the preferred choice. So just to summarize then, that frontline data really suggesting that um, comparing what would have been a relatively novel use of uh, everolimus in this frontline space to what we'd consider our standard of care sunitinib was not non-inferior, did not meet that endpoint. The recommendation is to stay with our standard of care sunitinib, uh, VEGF TKI, in that frontline patient population. And looking at this sequence trial design, there are challenges. There's, you know, the, the loss of patients uh, because of the other treatment options available to people at that time uh, was, was a, I think, a, a real limitation in being able to interpret that data. And it, it also challenges us when, when the clinician asks us, or the patient asks us, well, what was the survival in that design. And with the challenges in the design of the trial, we're really unable to speak to survival comparisons between the two arms. So I, I think that at the moment, based upon what was presented in abstract by, by Dr. Mozer, I think we, we feel confident in the, in the choice. I would say the following caveat again for the practitioner, uh, because they'll be scratching their heads and, say, and saying to themselves, well, isn't Toracel or Tempsirolimus approved in the poor prognostic group with previously untreated metastatic kidney cancer? The answer is yes. And, and how does that then address the everolimus versus sunitinib portion of that trial? And, and I think the trial showed us that the number of patients that had criteria that were comparable to the original um, Toracel or Tempsirolimus trial were small, that Toracel continues to be an option for the poor prognosis patient, and that at least in a small subpopulation of the record three trial, sunitinib is also an option for that patient population. And I would just add another interesting point of that trial for me was uh, in the non-clear cell. So many people have used the, the retrospective analysis from the Toracel trial of non-clear cell, which is also a small proportion, um, to say that TOR inhibitors have more activity in non-clear cell. And that's a question I get asked a lot from the community is how do I treat non-clear cell? Um, 
and again, it's, it's retrospective data, but it was a fair number of patients. I'm not remembering the numbers offhand, but it was a fair number of patients that looked like, again, there was an advantage to sunitinib in that setting. So really sort of, for me, the lesson is, you know, retrospective subset analyses are often misleading, and you really need prospective data. And even though this wasn't just in non-clear cell, it was a reasonable percentage and seems to indicate that VEGF inhibition is still preferred in that setting. Uh, as you're well aware, there's an ongoing trial looking at sunitinib versus everlimus strictly in non-clear cell, a randomized phase two that you guys are leading. So that will, I think, be the, certainly the most definitive evidence. But you know, some of these interesting subsets of risk group or clear cell, non-clear cell, even within the limitations in small subsets, I think are informative. Yeah, I, w I would say that the, uh, because there is heterogeneity even within the small clear cell, the non-clear cell population, right. that uh, it's very hard to reach any conclusions. We have uh, prospective data looking at uh, non-clear cell renal cell carcinoma treated with sunitinib. There's a difference between chromophobe versus papillary in that. So I think the conclusion for this trial really is that uh, uh, sunitinib is probably the choice compared to everlimus in the frontline setting. With regards to the other uh, sub-analyses, they're, they're intriguing but are not definitive. So, so Dan, let me just add in here just my flavor on this. Um, I agree with everyone, the thing that everyone's saying. I think at the end of the day, this trial proves as much as in a non-inferiority study can prove that there is really no role for an mTOR inhibitor for the vast majority of kidney cancer patients that we see in clinic in the frontline setting. Those are the good and intermediate risks. That was the largest proportion of that trial. That's the, that's the concern people had over the past several years. So what about mTOR in those, that population? The data that is the strongest, which still has category one, ESMO and NCCN guideline level evidence is still TOR inhibition for the poor, the true poor risk um, I agree with Bob that there are some subsets that hint that maybe VEGF inhibitors such as SUTENT have a role. We saw that from the original phase three in SUTENT. There was, I think, 6% of patients with the poor risk features that it seems to have some activity there. But the largest number by and far has been the, the poor risk from the TOR cell frontline trial. So for the practitioners, TOR cell should be considered as, as really a preferred option for patients in the frontline setting poor risk. Um, mTOR should not be used in uh, frontline setting good and intermediate risk.